Hello YouTube and welcome to the second Tron Academy episode. In this episode, I'm going to talk about setting up Android NDK and OpenCV on Eclipse. Now I think it's best to begin with this episode with a bit of background information. As you should know, Android apps are programmed in Java. The nature of Java is that it's a write once, run anywhere language. In contrast with C or C++, which is a write once, compile anywhere language. With Java, you should expect your code to run on various hardware platforms as long as the JVM is installed on it. Whereas with C, you need to recompile your code for all the different hardware platforms you wish to support. Let's look at Android's architecture. Android's JVM is called the Dalvik VM, which is located here. It is a bit different from the JVM you install on your PC, but conceptually they are the same. You can see that it runs on top of the kernel, in the same way it runs on top of the kernel in a PC operating system. When Java code is built, it is compiled into an intermediate code called Java bytecode instead of the native machine language of the target hardware. The bytecode is compiled by the JVM at runtime to execute the instructions on the CPU. This is what gives Java its portability to run anywhere, but someone still needs to do the hard work of porting the Delvic VM to different hardware. And while there are many advantages of write once run anywhere languages, speed is definitely not one of them. And when you want to do something processor intensive like computer vision, you want to squeeze out every last bit of performance there is available. Now can you bypass the Delvic VM layer and run programs directly on the kernel? The answer is yes. And Google supports this, to some extent. This is what the Android Native Development Kit, or NDK, is for. The NDK provides you with the facilities to compile C and C++ code to run on the Android kernel, which is actually just the familiar Linux. OpenCV is a computer vision library that is coded in C and C++. It is available for many different platforms, but they have kindly provided a version for Android. The Android version comes with Java wrappers, so you don't even need to touch C or C++ to use the library's functions. But you still have to compile the source code, and that's why you need the NDK. So obviously you're dealing with C stuff now, so you need to get this CDD plugin for Eclipse to help you code better C. So what you do is you grab the repository link, and you go to Eclipse, and you go through the same process you use to install the ADT plugin. You go install new software, and this time you add a different repository, and this one is called the CDT plugin. You paste the link there, and you look for packages in this repository. And it didn't find anything. Alright, oh, that's right, I'm using Juno, the older version of Eclipse. You probably have Kepler, so you probably should type in Kepler instead. But there we go, I'm using Juno, and what you do is you install the stuff that you need, and main features is what I need at the moment. There's a ton of other stuff. Uh, yeah, probably grab it later, actually. Yeah. Just wait for it to install. Allow access. Great, I need to restart Eclipse. Typical every time you need to install a new plugin. So just wait for Eclipse to start up again. And ooh, looks different. The start screen looks different. Shouldn't matter, just get back to what we were doing. So now you can code C in Eclipse. But now we need to move on and install the Android NDK. And we're just going to install the plugin first. And remember the NDK plugin on the ADD plugin repository that we didn't tick before? Well, this time we're ticking it because we're installing the nat native development kit. And we just install the, uh, the development kit. Ah, 
Yes, I have to remember to tell you that this is just like the ADT plugin. What the NDK plugin does is give Eclipse extra menus that help you interface the Native Development Kit, but it doesn't contain all the files that allow you to start developing uh, C or C++ code for Android. So you're going to have to basically tell the plugin where that folder is located. And uh, um, yeah, basically you go into Preferences, Android, and now there's a new thing called NDK. So you click on that. And basically, you have the point the location of the folder. And I haven't downloaded the NDK, so I'm going to go to the internet and download it. Um, I don't remember the link. I'm just going to type in Android NDK in Google, and the first result should lead me to what I want. Yeah, see, it does. So you go to the thing, and you basically look for the one that best suits your platform. In this case, in my case, it's Windows 64-bit. And I download it, and then I extract it. You can actually, oh, with WinRAR, you can extract it to exactly where you want it. I just extracted it right where it, it was located. And what you need to do is place this folder, the NDK R8E, into the into anywhere you want but the important thing is that you must not have any spaces in the file path if you have spaces this won't work it's a requirement from Google so you just got to follow it and this is precisely why I chose to put the ADD bundle folder in the uh, in the dev folder instead of program files because I wanted both the NDK and the ADT plugin folders to be in the same place and program files has a space in it so what I do is locate the folder that I've just extracted. So the dev. Okay. Apply. And boom, NDK is ready to use. I can start coding C++ uh, for Android. So now we can just go even further and install OpenCV. So we download OpenCV for Eclipse, grab the latest version. Uh, sorry, no, OpenCV for Android. I'm sorry I didn't show you the bit before where I located uh, OpenCV for Android. But, you know, Google just does the trick these days. Just type in OpenCV for Android and it'll lead you straight to the SourceForge repo repository. So once that folder's downloaded, um, you extract it to, again, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I don't think there's a requirement for no spaces, but I'm just dumping it in dev anyway, and I'm just going to avoid spaces, because I think from now on, anything involving this NDK stuff is just, spaces is bad altogether. Now, the OpenCV folder doesn't work like a plugin. It's basically just another project for, um, for Eclipse. So you import existing project into Workspace, and then you just locate the folder which you've just extracted. And then you click dev, there we go. That's the OpenCV folder. Do not tick copy projects into workspace. I find that doesn't work for some reason. And voila, OpenCV is set up. But of course, we're not finished. OpenCV is a lot more fiddlier than that. Something it won't compile and therefore you can't use it. The reason why is because OpenCV CV library has both a Java and a C component to it. And you've got to build the C component separately because Eclipse will deal with the Java bit, but not the C bit. So you've basically got to tell Eclipse that when you build this project, you've also got to, uh, you know, compile it as well. And with with a C++, and Eclipse can deal with that quite easily, but you've got to add a C++ nature to the project in order for you to basically uh, tweak things like make files and uh, compiler parameters. And in this case, it's the OpenCV library that really needs to have uh, the C++ nature added to it because it's where most of the C++ code is contained, but it doesn't really hurt to add all your other projects to C++ nature projects. So now if you go to properties after adding the C++ nature, you get um, C++ build command and C++ general. And this is where you can start setting up compilers for it. Now the default build command is wrong because make doesn't really make any sense in a Windows uh, platform. So what you do is you give the f the uh, file path to the uh, ndk-build.cmd command prompt file. And the ndk root is obviously not a real folder path name. It is a, uh, it is a pointer to the root location of the ndk folder. 
Uh, that's a convenience thing because what happens is that you can you can change your uh, the, the, your location of the NTK folder, and instead of going through every single project and changing the path, you can just change the NTK root variable to something else. So in this case, I'm just going to copy the address so the variable knows what NDK root is actually pointing to. And I'm just going to use forward slashes because I have a feeling that backslashes mean something else. I could be wrong, but you can use forward slashes in Eclipse. Right, and then, well, it's still not working, obviously. Cleaning your project sometimes does help, and it also causes a rebuild. You you actually have to click build sometimes with, um, with this C++ nature in your project. In this case, it didn't work, so I'm just going to run Eclipse's administrator, hoping that maybe it will start working, because, like, you, you have to open uh, a, a compiler, which is a command line thing, and maybe with administrator privileges, it might start working? I don't know. And amazingly, it actually started working. Huh. It, uh, uh, yeah, only two things have started working, but the library is working, and that's 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 the good part because that means you can actually start developing um, for your for your apps. If the samples are running, that's great, but in this case, only one sample is working, so we can check it out. And this app is pretty cool. Uh, basically, it takes all your camera stuff and put it into a 15 puzzle, which I'm too stupid to solve. It's not a particularly good app. It's not very responsive to my touch, but it shows a point. Often with these sample projects, errors can, can pop up that would not normally appear in a normal Android project that you create yourself. That's because you sort of imported them and it sometimes doesn't know where to locate libraries and stuff like that. If there's anything I like about Eclipse is that you can just hover over the errors and it will give you suggestions for what's wrong. And in this case, fix project setup and boom, error's gone. And that concludes my second tutorial. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and put a comment below on what you want me to do next.